Welcome to a brief introduction into the world of VDI and the global standards management process. In this presentation, I will cover what is EDI, including its origins, why we use EDI, and GS1's role in EDI and standards development. To start off, I want to summarize at the top that EDI, or Electronic Data Interchange, is simply the interchange of structured data according to agreed message standards by electronic means. But before we delve any further into EDI, let's take it further back. How far back? Since the dawn of time, we have been communicating to each other with messages using cave paintings, smoke signals, hieroglyphics, and stone tablets. And as you can see, not much has changed. No matter how primitive or advanced the method, Somehow, there had to be an agreement in language for communicating and a method to communicate a message. EDI also follows these basic principles, but with the world today, there is a requirement to extend this for electronic communication, primarily for business purposes. So how did EDI come about? Well, when it comes to origin stories, EDI has a very interesting one. After the conclusion of World War II, East Berlin was controlled by Soviet Union. The introduction of the Deutschmark on the 18th of June in 1948 was not a welcome one for Soviet Union. So the day after this occurred, trains and traffic were halted, land and water connections were severed, and West Berlin was left with 36 days worth of food and 45 days worth of coal. In one day, the whole supply chain stopped. This was known as the Berlin blockade. Although ground routes were in dispute, the same was not true for the air. A prior agreement was put in place in 1945, post-World War II, that cargo aircraft were not a threat. This was an opportunity to help those who live in East Berlin, but it also posed huge challenges. As well as agreements in language for communicating and a method to communicate a message, there was a need for speed, which was impossible without change. There were different shipping manifests, different languages, and how do we ensure we are sending the right supplies to needy people? All of these factors were a cause for delay when time was crucial. A standard was born at a time of need to save lives by US Army Sergeant Edward A. Gilbert. In those 318 days, the Allies had conducted more than 277,000 flights to West Berlin bringing in more than 2.3 million tons of supplies. Gilbert didn't forget the value of standards manifests, and in the early 1960s, he developed a standard set of electronic messages for sending cargo information between DuPont and a carrier, chemical Lehman tank lines. By 1968, so many railroads, airlines, truckers, and ocean shipping companies were using electronic manifests that they formed the Transportation Data Coordinating Committee, also known as the TDCC, to create cross-industry standards. And in 1975, they published its first electronic data interchange specification. So EDY. In the perfect scenario for a manual process, an order from customer to supplier could take one to five days. The issue is that there are many steps that can fail. Some of this is no receipt of the received order, orders lost in transit, keying errors or unintelligible handwriting. And even if you have 2020 vision, you probably missed a keying error on this slide. See if you can find it. There are some common misconceptions of what EDI is. To try and drive home what EDI is, I thought it would be useful to highlight what it is not. Electronic transactions occur daily, whether it is by sending mail, going to the cash point, or buying bread at your convenience store. None of these are EDI for many reasons. There's no standard around sending a file, and there's not transmitting any business-to-business -business data. 
It is also not just an IT function. IT is merely a mechanism for sending data and removing human error. EDI is more than just sending data. It's sending standardized data around product information, order requests, fulfillment, invoices, forecasting information, etc. So in an electronic world, the journey of an EDI transaction ensures that any messages sent to a company is not only received, but without any human prone errors. To achieve this, companies invest in software that can convert in-house data into a standardized format to be sent electronically and securely to another organization. Any disputes about the content of the message can also be handled using the same architecture. Not only that, the amount of time savings are made through reduced phone calls, fax, posts, and emails, reduced stock levels, disputes, data errors, administration, and compliance tricks. There's also an increased collaboration, improved forecasting, and faster payment. And we all know that time is money in business. In the next few slides, I will go through some of the EDI standards that exist out there and which ones GS1 provides support and maintain. As you can see, there are several standards that GS1 support today. One of those maintained is a byproduct of the other. GS1 EANCOM is a subset of the larger UN CE FACT standard. But development is constant and with exciting new areas such as semantics, data models, APIs, etc. Generally, these EDI types incorporate the GS1 standards of physical identification of trade items and logistic units using GTINs and global location numbers to help identify the trading partners into the electronic messages. These EDI types allow integrating the physical flow of goods with related information sent by electronic means. The GS1 EANCOM, these are some of the more common messages transacted. We have PARTEN, which is location information with related operational, administrative, commercial, and financial data. Orders, which is orders, goods, or services, and specific relevant quantities, dates, and locations of delivery. Dispatch advice, which specifies details of the goods dispatched under agreed conditions. It also informs the consignee what materials were dispatched and when allows prepared goods, receipts, and cross-check with orders. Invoice is sent by the seller to the buyer, claiming payment for goods or services supplied. Hand move, sent to a logistics service provider to identify handling services on products and optionally the movement of specified goods. Here is a typical EA Incom message which, as you can see, is a little hard to read with the naked eye. The first three characters in each line describe the type of data. For example, DTM stands for date, time, month, QTY is quantity, and NAD is name and address. There are also several GS1 keys in the message, which we can all agree is very important. Much like EANCOM, GS1 XML serves the same purpose, although it is more widely used in other areas such as web pages. Below are some of the common message types, which is not much different than EANCOM. The intended result is the same, but the language is very different. In this example of an XML message, you can easily identify what each line is trying to describe. You will always have an open tag at the start of a line, the detail or content, followed by the closing of the tag, which tells the machine to move on to the next line. EANCOM typically uses an apostrophe at the end of the line instead. And as always, GS1 keys are always important, no matter the message type. There are many ways to communicate EDI messages between businesses. Below are some of the more common ones. 
VAN or virtual area network is very fast and reliable. It's a single communication link to multiple trading partners for each user company. It's very secure with password control access, validation of sender and receiver, and control of message integrity. The downside is that VANs are often perceived as too expensive and difficult to integrate for smaller user companies. Increasingly, EDI communication is performed by the internet. It's being used more and more for classic EDI. It requires additional care for security and reliability issues. And finally, Web EDI is a solution built on a combination of internet standards and EDI. For small and medium enterprises for exchanging data with their large customers, Web EDI solutions can be fully compatible with classic EDI. Before we get into the GSMP, let's take it back a step. The goal of any GS1 member organization is to support and encourage our members to use GS1 standards. For EDI, we can drive change through an industry initiative, usually through multinational companies, or assist specific retailers and suppliers with use cases that the standards may not cover today. Understanding the needs of our members ensures that we stay relevant and up to date with the ever changing landscape of supply chain. How we do this is through the global standards management process. There are several GSMP groups for barcodes, master data, images, and EDI is no exception. This is a forum on developing and raising business needs for an industry, member, and even country specific requests to other GSMP members who are subject matter experts in EDI. Deliverables are created through a four step process of steering, requirements, development, and collateral. There are a set of principles in blue, which are intended to ensure fairness and broad acceptance. Since 2019, several GS1 member organizations have been working towards a common language within EDI, regardless of whether it is XML or EANCOM. As I've mentioned previously, and in the message examples, the information conveyed is the same. What the semantics project is trying to do from an attribute level is uniform what each key bit of information means. This project has many GS1 member organizations as contributors, including Germany, Sweden, France, United Kingdom, and Global Office. We have just submitted a writing principles document and the draft of the orders guideline into the GSMP and dispatch an invoice to come soon after. A lot of elements and orders cross over with dispatch and invoice, so our hope is that the journey will be simpler as we progress. Finally, GS1 standards are used by nearly 2 million businesses around the world. More than 5 billion GS1 barcodes are scanned every day, and EDI is central in ensuring businesses can communicate to each other at the speed required for supply chain for today and tomorrow. This concludes the video on a brief introduction of EDI and the GSMP. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.